right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I hope that you are safe, protected, and blessed. I pray that you are prayed up. I pray that you have repented and you are baptized. I hope that you had a good week, and I pray that these next coming days are better for you. And I pray that more prosperity and joy and abundance and happiness unto you, okay? Now, today's message is going to be more of a church note. I just got an email, and the title of it is called Faithful Wounds 2 from Jen DeLeon. And I did a message about the church note titled Faithful Wounds. That was part one, though, so this one is going to be part two. And that was a couple of weeks ago, so it's a continuation of the last message, which was a really good, positive message. And I hope that when you guys listen to this church note, I pray that you can reflect on it. You can apply it to your personal life and see how you can fix your situations and how you could put God first through it and just follow through with it. All right. So, you know, I just hope things are going good and better for y'all. A lot of things going on in the world, but even in the midst of all of it, we're still blessed. We still have the most high. We are still faithful and steadfast and the most high is with us through it all. Okay. So what I would love to do is just read this church note to y'all and hopefully it could bless you. Okay. So here we go. Faithful wounds part two. If you love the Faithful Wounds notes from a few weeks ago, you'll love this one as well. This one focuses on being re- reciprocating. All right, so here we go. Faithful Wounds, part two. What good is it to gain if you don't retain what is gained? If you understand what to expect, you don't have to deal with the trauma of the occurrences. If you see me bruise you, if you see me prune you, if you see me coming at you with a knife, I'm not coming to destroy you. I'm coming to improve you. You don't have to tell people to stay if everything is comfortable. You can't be faithful and leave. You can only use the information that sticks. It's not the word I preach, it's the word that's stuck. When the enemy is going after you and he's fighting you, you cannot use the word you cannot use the word that didn't stick. Your feelings are not God's parameter of your growth. You can believe and doubt at the same time. You are such a control freak and you have to understand everything because you worship your mind so much. Controlling the mouth is a sign of dwelling of the spirit. When you show me I can trust you with a hundred dollars, I will give you a thousand dollars. When you show me I can trust you with a thousand dollars, I will give you a million dollars. Stop praying million dollar prayers when you are faithful, when you are unfaithful with the hundred dollars. God isn't broke. He's just trying to teach you how to be faithful. If you master it on this level, then you get promoted to the next level. God wants to promote you. What you're going through right now isn't a real thing. It's just a test. It's a test in a controlled environment. And if you master this in this environment, then I can use you in that environment. Nothing lasts without being reciprocate. If you keep taking more than you're given, I'm either going to wear out or I'm going to wake up. Everybody is what's in it for me. As long as you're that, you will never prosper. Anything that has to be reciprocated requires less work. What do you bring to the table? What can I count on you for? So you can answer what I can count on you for. We can't have a relationship because we don't have to be reciprocate to each other. If I'm going, if I'm giving more than I'm getting, eventually I'm going to be mentally, emotionally, physically, or spiritually depleted. Stingy people will always dry out because they do not understand being reciprocate. How can I expect him to be faithful while I continue to be inconsistent? If you keep moving it, you will hinder its growth. Be unmovable, moving a plant. If you don't understand principles, you will start worshiping persons. If you operate in the principles, it will work for you. You cannot stay at home, cross your legs, and lay in the bed for weeks and believe God for prosperity. Not when he said, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Until I see you do it, you didn't give me nothing to bless. When you do it, it'll do it'll do it back. Stop looking at me for what you've got to do. You're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. I'm a God of reciproca- being reciprocate. Out of 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, how much time does God get? How much time gets put into your marriage? How much time do you put in your kid? You can't reap more than you sow in any area of your life. You are the most effective where you are the most committed. The things that are living in your life, the best are the things where you are most invested. Change your investment, you change your return. If you want to change your return, you don't need to pray. You need to change your investment. If you put little investment in the business, you're going to get little in return. The person who is reading, the person who is making friends in it, that person will always outrun you. Doesn't mean they're better than you. You could be better than them, but they're invested more than you. 
Why do you keep expecting to excel in areas where you are poorly invested? Why do you self-sabotage by taking so on so much that there is not enough for you to sufficiently invest? It may not be what you say yes to. It may be what you say no to. The most limited resource you have is not money, it's time. You have to be very selective of what you say yes to because you have to invest in everything you say yes to. What are you willing to be faithful to? What are you willing to invest in? Don't write a bigger list than the time. Talent, energy, and finances to support. Some of you are emotionally or financially depleted because you're overinvested beyond your ability. I allow people to walk out of your life so you can be more concentrated. If you become more concentrated, you will become more fruitful. You can't have much fruit doing everything. You have to have the courage to say no. My heart will make me say yes to the point that I'm overextended and then I find I'm taking care of everything but me and wonder why I'm not fruitful because I need to prune the branches that are not producing in my life. What are you faithful to that isn't working? Stop giving your double portion to visitors. All those people who came for a reason or a season, stop giving a double portion of what you have to people who have not stayed long enough to deserve the level of investment. When you draw back, I draw back. I'm not being mean. I can't control your behavior, but I can limit my expectation. What was making me bitter is that I was over-invested in people who were limitedly, limitedly invested in me. I will throw everything at you until I notice you ain't throwing nothing back. And then I'm hurt. And then I'm angry and upset. You shouldn't be angry at them. You should be angry at you. You are the one who has overextended because what you're teaching me is your capacity. Why would I pour a gallon of water into a cup and then get angry at the cup? You saw I was a cup when you started pouring, so you can only pour according to my capacity. Stop telling people they broke your heart. You broke your own heart. You knew they was a cup, and now you're mopping up all this stuff off the floor because you thought you could turn them into a gallon. You cannot turn a cup person into a gallon capacity, so you feed them on the level of their ability. There are some things you don't get if you don't abide. Don't even commit to the work into the hands of someone who doesn't have the work ethic because you will set yourself up for failure. The anointing you respect is the anointing you receive. Your latter days shall be your greatest days. God says, you're not finished yet. I've got some pruning to do. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, I cut it away so I can focus on the thing I am most effective at. The problem is you're so nice. Your nice is killing you because you are so nice you don't want to wound nobody. So you say yes to everybody and then you become branded as a yes person. So then more people come because everybody heard you would say yes. You're nice, but inside you're angry. You're secretly angry because you don't get reciprocated. So you start to be resentful and spurts of anger because you're out of balance. The worst part about it is not one demon did this to you. You did this to yourself. Everything I've, I've ever learned about you, you taught me. So if I learned to use you, you taught me because you didn't want to draw first blood. People will use you as long as you will let them. Want to be a good friend? Draw some boundaries. Everything you keep pouring in and seeing no results, cut it away so you can focus where you are most productive. Pray. What is God talking to me about? Where am I overextended? What do I need to cut away so I can get too much fruit? My time, my energy, my talent, my finances, they're, too, they're spread too thin. I need to see much fruit. What are the leafy relationships, commitments, engagements, responsibilities that are stopping me from being the man, a woman of God I was created to be? There are some people who did great things for me in one season in my life that I'm still dragging to another season that were not meant to go. What God has for me is going to require my full attention to be fruitful. So there you have it, people. Faithful Wounds Part 2. This was a very excellent church note. This was a very great note. I pray that y'all can really apply this to your lives. I'm pretty sure all of us can definitely relate to this, and we could definitely um, vouch about how much of our situations match this church note. And, you know, you have to draw boundaries. Um, there's a time and a place for everything. Every season has its due time. And when it comes to dealing with people, we got to deal with those things accordingly. You know, a lot of people are just way too giving, and then it ends up hurting them. And then they get hurt by it, you know what I mean? So um, we have to really trust in God. We have to let the Lord guide us in a lot of situations, especially with dealing with people. And we always have to have balance. We have to always have boundaries when we're dealing with things. We have to also learn a time and place for things and just having that discipline, being able to say yes, being able to say no. You know, we have to balance that, all right? So 
there you have it, people. All right, that is a church note, and this is a really great one. All right, so what I'm going to do as we close out is give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins, and go from there, all right? So here we go. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the Beloved Son, the Blessed and Only Potent, the Blessed and Only Ruler, the Branch, the Bread of God, the Bread of Life, the Bridegroom, the Capstone, the Captain of Salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, king of Israel, king of kings and lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the lie of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Be Yahweh, Ahai, Ashai, Muhammad, Shiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, our righteousness, Elohim, Emmanuel, Lord of all, Jehovah Jireh, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man, of, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God, a savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice to Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the revelation, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and life. The wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, we touch and agree. We serve an awesome creator, and his son is amazing for dying for our sins as well. All praises to him. In the authority and the power of the name of Jesus Christ, we touch and agree. Amen. Hallelujah. So there you have it, people. That is the church note. All right. Faithful wounds. All right. We have to deal with the ups and downs, the twists and the turns, the trials and tribulations, um, the hardships. But things get better along the way. That pain will turn into prosperity. All right. That pressure will turn into perseverance. And those rough times will turn smoothly and be very fruitful and flourishing for you. OK. So there you have it, people. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life forth for the Most High. I pray that you repent. I pray that you have new beginnings. I pray that you can prosper from your pain. I pray that you could turn your tra your trauma into treasure. I pray that you could turn your life around for the better. I pray that you could help somebody with your testimony and with your resources. And I just hope that you keep serving the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.